guys, this is Christy Falk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent stamp nut demonstrator in the US. Well, today I've got a card for you. It's my first card that I've made with the Art and Bloom bundle, and this is a special bundle, and I'll show you the bundle here in just a minute. I love that we can use the embossing folder and the dies at the exact same time, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. And I did do these with vellum, and I show you how I'll show you how I got this effect. It's different if you saw my paper pumpkin video, and I'll put a link to that up at the top using Stampin' Blends color. This time I'm using ink pants and sponge doppers. And I'll just show you a really neat thing with this. And this folder is what gives it this look too. So if you'd like to stamp along with me, just pause the video, click on the uh, post link that I've got below that tells you that's where all the dim dimensions and the supply list are. You can get all that information, get all your stuff together and come back and make the card with me. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first off, I want to show you the bundle. This is called the Art and Bloom Bundle, and it comes with this stamp set here and the dies. Now that's normal. A lot of times there are dies that go with the uh, stamp set or punch. That's a regular bundle, but it also includes an embossing folder. This is the first time we've had a hybrid embossing folder, and it is so cool. And I, it, I mean, it looks pretty just the way it's going to emboss, but you're going to love the way we can use the dies with this. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. So that is the Art and Bloom bundle, and it is $53, which is a really good deal. You get your dies, stamp set, and the embossing folder. And this is in the annual catalog. Okay, let's go ahead and get to stamping. I'm going to grab my Stampin' Pierce Max. This is a photopolymer stamp set and a piece of our vellum. It's vellum cardstock. It's four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And now I'm going to just kind of dry it just a little bit with my heat tool. Just take any moisture off of it. Do that real quick. It doesn't take that long. Okay, now I'm going to take the big stamp here and we're going to ink it up with vellum. Now, the way I've learned to do this, it really doesn't matter if you don't have it perfect because you can move your vellum around in your um, embossing folder. But if you've got this one, this little half one down here at the bottom right, you're good. So let's go ahead and grab that vellum. I mean, sorry, Versamark. The vellum's already out. <laughs> Get that inked up really good with the Versamark. And I'm going to turn this this way because it'll fit better on the vellum. I guess I'm sure you're having trouble seeing it, but I've got it right there in the center. Actually, you know what I should do? Let me show you, see if I can get this grid paper out without moving it. There we go. Now you can see the vellum better. Don't know why I didn't think of that sooner. So now we've got that on there. Okay, so I don't, oh here, yeah, I think you can't see that. There you go. So you see the watermark it leaves. And now we're going to heat emboss this. If you haven't heat embossed, you're going to love it. It is so much fun. I used to heat emboss all the time. It's actually one of the first techniques I learned. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my white emboss powder, and this is now in the basic Stampin' Emboss powders. You get uh, black, clear, and white in the set. I'm going to take my little spoon, and I always dump it in these big containers because I think it makes it less messy this way. Now I can just take my spoon and just put it back in here. So I don't leave it in the jar anymore. Get all this covered up here. And you can see it a little better too because now it's nice and bright and white looking. It's going to look even brighter here when we get going here. Okay, so tap that off. Okay, that came off pretty good. And now we're going to melt the emboss powder. And this is something I saw another demo do. I bought these little uh, clip uh, boards. And I'm just going to put just a corner of it right up here where it'll hold it down for me. Grab my heat tool and you just put it down, get it nice and hot. Now when I, I'll check it like this, keep it far away so I don't burn my hand because it does get very hot. If I remember right, it's over 600 degrees. And then just keep it on one area until you see it start to melt. You don't want to get too close because we're using vellum and sometimes that'll make it start to curl. So as you can see, this is getting a shinier white. Let me get that all closer to you. So the top is the way we want it. So you just keep going until it all melts. Okay, now everything looks nice and shiny and white. So we've got that heat embossed now. And now let's go ahead and get the die cutting machine out. 
Okay, one thing I forgot to tell you at the beginning, we'll get the dies back out. The dies that you're gonna need is the big one here and this leaf one here. Those are the only dies I'm using. And to do this, you need the uh, platform number one. And first off, I'm gonna show you how to do this, just the embossing. It's like it, uh, it is with our 3D folders. So we've got this here and I'm gonna emboss this piece of soft succulent. It's four by five and a quarter. I'm just gonna kind of, kind of put it in the middle. Actually, if you just line the bottom up with that um, line in the embossing folder, it's perfect. Lay this down, so I've just got the platform number one, the base one, and then you need the specialty plate that goes on top. You put it in fold first, like I just did, then run it through, and that's just doing the regular embossing. Isn't that neat? I really like that. Now, if I wanted to do green, then I could have uh, die cut this out at the same time, but I'll show you that here in just a minute. It's pretty cool. Now where you see the Stampin' Up! emblem, that is the side that you're gonna put your dies. So let's open this up. I'm gonna grab my dies, lay this down, and you want them blade facing up. And it actually locks into place. See, I'm kinda moving, it's, the die's not moving. You can, kind, you can feel it get attached there. Then I'm going to grab my vellum, and we are going to put this down here and what I can do, I can turn this over and move it around because you can see through it. And I'm going to get lined up with the embossing. See how I did that? That looks pretty good. Okay, so we will close this. The dies are still in place. So you still just use the platform number one. Put this in fold first. Grab that specialty plate. I'll run this through. Oops, that made a loud noise, didn't it? It made my whole table move. <laughs> and now I have these, and they are heat embossed and embossed. Now, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but it does kind of rough up the heat embossing I just, just did, but I really ended up liking that. This was an experiment. So if you want it to the uh, heat emboss to be nice and smooth, you, may not, you won't want to um, do the embossing. You'll just want to uh, die cut them out. But I thought this give, gave it the rough look that I wanted. So I thought that was pretty cool. Sometimes it's fun to kind of experiment and see what you want to do with it. So that's what it looks like just embossing. And then these are the vellum pieces here. I am using the um, Galloped Contour dies that are in the annual catalog. It goes with the color contour bundle. I do have the stamp set, I'm not using that one today, but I'm gonna use the second largest one here. I love how these rectangles are all a little different, but they look really good together. This is a must have die set, I love it. So we'll need that one. I'm gonna grab a piece of basic white. This is a three and a half by four and three quarter inch piece. We're gonna use platform number one. Then we need the platform number two, which is the die plate. Then I'm gonna need a standard cutting plate, which is a number three. Put this in. And one thing I have learned, actually my upline taught me this. When you put this in, when you do a rectangle, it's actually better to have a, sm a small part like a corner go in first. It's easier on your machine and it's easier on um, the die. So put this in here. Because if you've ever warped a die, that's not good. So it works a lot better putting the small one in first and it cuts a lot better too. There we go. So that's what that one. I love the little stitching on that. Okay, well we've got the sandwich still made. We're going to do some more die cutting. I'm going to grab another piece of vellum. This is a three by two inch piece and we are going to die cut this leaf um, one here. Now we want four leaves. So we're going to be running this through twice. So I've got this on one end. Put your uh, standard, top standard cutting plate on. And I was so impressed with how easy these die cut. So I'm gonna take these out real quick. Those little pieces will come out super quick, but I wanna hurry up and get these die cut. So I'll get this back over here. Actually, I could've just run it through again, but that's okay. <laughs> and put this on top. Just make sure it's on the vellum, it's not going over where you just die cut those other leaves. OK, 
Okay, and now we'll get this die cutting machine out of the way. Okay, first off, let's go ahead and get some more stamping done. I wanna grab this scalloped rectangle that we just made, and I'm gonna grab the greeting, you're a rare find, and use my soft succulent ink pad. And I'm gonna stamp this in the bottom left corner. This is one of the new in colors. I'm actually using two in colors, but they're from the different sets. This is from the brand new one, the 2021 to 2023. And I'm also using the Bumblebee ink pad, and that's from the 2020 to 2022. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, finish up the stamping. I'm gonna grab a piece of basic white. This is gonna be the inside of our card. This is four by five and a quarter. And we are going to stamp this border right here with my soft succulent again. Should have left that open. I just have it, I close them without even thinking. Oops, look like I got a little hair on there. There we go. Put that right across the bottom edge. Okay, we've got a border there. There's another border stamp that's a bunch of dots. This one I'm gonna use my Bumblebee ink pad. Okay. And I just put it right across the top. There we go. I just want to see what those borders look like. That's why I decided to do that. You could also stamp the flowers in the corner. That worked too. So there's the inside of our card. Let's go ahead and get that put in the card so I, we don't lose that. So grab a piece of bumblebee. This is a five and a half by eight and a half. Line those corners up. Get my bone folder. Okay. Looks like I got a little smudge on there, but that's okay. We're gonna cover that up. And let's go ahead and grab that emboss piece while we're at it. So now that I wanna cover that up, it's gonna bug me. So the flowers are gonna be in the middle. It doesn't matter um, which way the flowers are going because we're gonna cover those up. All we're gonna see are the leaves on the um, outside, which is a real neat effect. I love those leaves that are around the flowers. Makes a nice border for your images. Put that right there in the middle. And then we'll put this one on the inside of the card. Okay, now you can do whatever you want. You can put this up at the top like this. I liked it better on the bottom. So I'm gonna put that on my bottom. There we go. So that's ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna do some uh, things with our little vellum here. I wanna make them into colors. First off, I wanna show you how easy it is to get all these little pieces out. So I'm gonna put it over the dark. See, I just barely, I just touched it and they all fell out. There are a bunch of little vellum pieces here. I'm gonna put this back in my dish because these vellum pieces are really easy to lose. So as long as I know they're in my dish, I know I'm not gonna lose them. So I'm just kind of sweeping it. I'm really not even pushing it. And they come right out. I could probably even just flick it, let's see. Well, this one, the flicking, but everything else came out. So those are really easy to get pieces out. And something I've had for a little while, I keep forgetting to get out, get my little, I thought I'm gonna have some little pieces to get my little vacuum out. I've had this little guy, I got it an an, on Amazon, wanted to um, buy it. I've had it on my wish list probably a year or two, because I had a friend that had a cow one at a crop I was at. So it's probably been closer to two years because it was before COVID. So I've had this on my list and I find that I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Actually, I saw my upline, she had found another vacuum. I was getting her little pieces up. I thought, okay, I definitely need to get that thing. Make, helped remind me of it. You know how you get things on your wish list and you forget all about it. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this card. I'm going to grab my vellum flower here and I'm having it where I've got the heat embossing. So you want uh, that on top. Let's go ahead and just grab all three of them here. I'm gonna grab uh, my uh, sponge dauber and my bumblebee ink pad. And I'm gonna start here in the middle because I kind of want it darker and kind of go over this. It is going over the uh, heat embossing a little bit, but it does resist it. It's not gonna resist it 100% because I embossed it, uh, dry embossed it actually, I guess I should say. But isn't that neat? That gives that yellow color. I can just keep going until it looks the way I want it. And we can put this over to the side and let it dry. And we'll do the same thing with the other flowers. Okay, now I am gonna take a little Kleenex here I've got 
and wipe off the heat embossing just a little bit. That'll help brighten it up a little bit. And actually, I probably did that one a little too soon. These that I did first, I'm not wiping off too much ink. I'm gonna add a little more ink to this one because I could tell that top petal got a little lighter than I wanted it to. So you just let it dry just for a few minutes. It doesn't even have to dry for very long, just a few seconds. And maybe I think I'll just pat that one since I don't want you to have to wait. But there, isn't that neat? So now I've got my colored flowers. And I wanted these leaves to be colored too. Now these were embossed so I don't have to worry about uh, wiping off any embossing. But what I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe off my hands a little bit until I get some yellow. I'm gonna grab my soft succulent and another sponge dauber and just go over this to make these green. So this is another way you can do your vellum. Like I said, in my paper pumpkin one, I used our blends, but you can use our ink pads too. And this is gonna give me nice green leaves. See how neat it is when you do that sponge, you could have a little stencil on the back. I'll have to do a card showing you that. Okay, we'll get all of these. I'm gonna put these leaves back in my dish again because I know I'm gonna lose them. When they're colored, they're easier to find, but sometimes they're still hard to find. Okay, so we're all done with that. So I'll put that to the side. Now it's time to just put this together. I'm gonna to grab my rectangle here. And I'm gonna grab two pieces of ribbon. This is the Soft Succulent Open Weave Ribbon. And they're both five inches long. I'm gonna grab a glue dot and put one on each end of one of the strips and just push it, squeeze it in so it gets attached to the ribbon. If you don't squeeze hard enough, it won't, the ribbon won't bring it up. But if you get it squeezed really good, it'll come up. And I'm gonna wrap it right around the top of my greeting. Oops, I've got a glue dot stuck to my finger. There we go. I'm gonna put it right above it like that. Make it straight, and the way to make it straight is to make sure, see this one I've got all the way around a scallop, so let's make sure this one's around the same scallop on the other side. Okay, so we've got that on there. I'm gonna put this in my dish, I'll put that on here in a minute. Now we're gonna add these uh, flowers. Now my little flatter one is gonna go on the top. First I'm gonna lay these down before I attach them. And then I had it so this was here and this was here. So let me stand up so I can see what I'm doing here. You just lay them down the way it looks good to you. And that doesn't look too bad. I might angle that one a little bit more like that. So I'm gonna take my bottom one first. I'm gonna use my glue dots again. And we've got this area here that you are not gonna see a glue dot through. There's a lot of heat embossing there. So I'm gonna put my glue dot right there in the center, okay? Hold these down, line, lay that back down again. Stick that down, this one's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna take a glue dot, put it right there in the center. May not be right in the center, that one was in the center. My first one didn't get right in the center, but nobody can see it still because of all the heat embossing right there in the center. I'm gonna kind of play around with it again. There, I like that bit look better, there we go. Stick that down. And then we are going to take a stamp and dimensional because I wanted this one popped up a little bit. And this will be hidden too in that big center. This also has a little bit bigger center than those other flowers. Take that paper backing off. Kind of angle it the way I want it before I lay it down. Let's do, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Now let's go ahead and put this on the card. Grab our card base again. I only want one layer to be popped up with dimensionals. I, almost, I thought about putting dimensionals on this. I thought, oh, that's gonna make it too thick for mailing. So we're gonna go ahead and grab my seal and put some seal in each corner. And I wanna put some on the ribbon also, so it'll stay stuck down. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and put one there, in the, there too in the center. And I'm gonna attach this so it's angled a little bit, like so. Okay, so push it all down. And now I think it's easier to put the leaves on once you've got the whole card, um, have it attached to the card. That way you can tell if your leaves are going too far over your card base. You don't want them to go past it or they're gonna get smushed when you put them in your envelope. So here's my green, one of my green leaves. I'm just gonna put a glue dot right here on the bottom 
bring that up. And then I'm going to lay it, let's see, I know I wanna put two up here, but I wanna make sure they look good. Make sure that's where I want them. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm gonna put that one there. While we got this one out, we'll go ahead, because I'd forgotten to lay it down. Normally I lay them down first, then I, like I did with my flowers. But that's okay. And this one I need to bring down just a little bit, and probably angle it a little bit, because I don't want it over the edge of that card. There we go. That looks good. So I've got those two leaves down. I've got two more to go. Now these I'm gonna lay down first, like I meant to do for the first one. I'm gonna to have to put these in a little different area than what I did on my original. Up here, it's gonna make them so they're too um, close to the edge. Maybe move them up like that a little bit. Oh, that looks good. So it is important to lay them down before you put your glue dots on. Grab my glue dot here on the bottom again, and I'm not worrying that there's, um, you can feel the sticky stuff here because it's getting tucked under my flower, so it's not gonna touch to my envelope at all when I put it in. Oop, that one I need angle a little bit more. There we go. If it's over just a little bit, you're still gonna be good because the envelopes are a little bit larger. Just not much. And I'll put this one down here. And the other nice thing about putting only adhesive in the middle is I can lift those little flower petals up and tuck in my leaf. Okay, so we've got that all done. Now we wanna grab that last piece of ribbon. I'm gonna thread that underneath the attached one, like so, and tie it on with a single knot. Okay, play around with it, get it where I want it. I wanna make sure it's not covering up my greeting there. Grab my scissors and we'll cut the ends off at an angle so they're about the same length. And there's that. But when I got done with that, I thought, oh, it's got to have some bling. So I'm using the opal rounds. These were originally in the January to uh, June. I forgot the name of it there for a minute. Uh, mini catalog. But thankfully, they made it into the um, annual catalog. So I'm going to grab my petty end of my um, take your pick tool. I'm scooting the opal round. This is a large one, so I'm using the larger ones for my flower centers. You just scoot it and scoop it up. Oop, that one. I'm going to get some more putty out. That's the problem. It's kind of getting smashed on me. There we go. Turn that one over. There we go. You have to make sure you've got enough of the putty sticking out. Another large one. I am going to put one here because that center is showing a little bit. So it's not gonna show the whole thing, but it looks a little funny not having that on there when I did my first card. Now we've got some smaller sizes. You can tell I love these opal rounds because I'm almost done with my first pack. Let's put one right about here. Another smaller one. Let's see, we need one right here. And another one, let's see. How about maybe right there? Okay, so now we've got our bling on. So that is my first Art and Bloom bundle card. I hope you liked that, and I hope you enjoyed how you can uh, use the embossing folder two different ways, just for embossing, and you can also put your die in there and cut and emboss at the same time. Pretty cool, I hope we get some more of those hybrid folders. Actually, I think there is one in the, up, there is, there's an, another hybrid set in the new uh, July to December mini catalog, which will start in August. They had to back it up a month because of, shipments being so delayed they didn't want to have a ton of things not orderable and frustrate everybody so that's going to start in august but i get to as a demonstrator i get to start ordering things july 1st i am super excited i've seen the catalog it looks wonderful and you're going to love it too another good reason to be a demonstrator i love getting my stuff early if you're interested in that i've got a link below you can click to find out more about being on my team the benefits of joining it's a lot of fun and celebration is getting ready to start too we're doing two celebrations that's gonna start in August also, so this is a really good time to uh, get all that stuff together and start your business during celebration because that's usually when sales are higher because people wanna get that free stuff. Okay, so there's the card. And if you are a dem uh, do live in the United States and do not have a demonstrator of your own, I would love to be yours. Just click that contact me link below and send me your, your mailing address and I'll send one of these new annual catalogs out to you. And then when the new mini gets here, I'll send one out, those out to you too. That way you've got both new catalogs. Okay, there's the card again. I hope you enjoyed stamping with me. And if you'd like to stamp with me again, make sure to subscribe to my uh, video, to my channel, I'm sorry, below. 
and uh, click on that little bell icon you see and select all. That way YouTube will notify you every time I do a video. And please support my channel by giving me a thumbs up or commenting below. I really do appreciate it. It helps out a lot. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Thank you.